Continuing on with page 262. Sorry about that, I accidentally pressed the stop button when I was recording. So terracing again is a bunch of flat steps here. Then we have intercropping where you have bands of different types of crops. And it's all of these are somewhat similar. These are more on hillsides. And then this one is more on a flat area. Shelter belts are for wind erosion. You plant trees to prevent the winds, or, or as a wind break. Trees can be a wind break. And then we already described no-till farming as a cover crop. If you leave behind the residue, the old plants from last year, on top of your soil, then wind can't blow away your soil and water can't wash it away. Read about all of these and make sure you can describe them all and be able to identify them all on a multiple choice or describe them for an FRQ. On page 263, you need to know two or three of the benefits of no-till farming. Be able to write about it on an FRQ. Here are descriptions of the different types of erosion prevention. Read through them, understand them, be able to identify them by description on a multiple choice. Page 265. Alright, so at the bottom of 264 we have irrigation has boosted productivity but has also caused long-term soil problems. Okay, so in 265... So, um, let me see where I want to start here. Let's start over on this side. I'm going to rearrange my sticky notes. So, there's some problems with soil. So, irrigation, one of the problems it can cause is water logging. Too much water can cause root rot. It can also cause salinization. We'll do a lab on this. What is salinization? Well, it's where soil becomes saltier as irrigated water. Now, irrigated water has salts, just natural salts from the ground. A river washes over the ground, picks up a little bit of salts. And then you take that water and you put it in sprinklers and put it on your crops. This doesn't happen with rainwater because rainwater is pure. But if you pump water out of the ground or take it from rivers and then you use sprinklers, that's irrigation. And that water is going to have tiny bits of salt. Well, over time, this water evaporates and leaves behind tiny bits of salt, but they can build up. So over time, the buildup of salts prevent seed germination and or plant growth. So there's some ways that you can prevent salinization. Well, here's a picture of conventional irrigation. And so a lot of this water evaporates and leaves behind tiny bits of salts that over many, many years, like, you know, 20 to 30 years, builds up salt in the soil. And then you have decline in crop productivity. A solution is drip irrigation. You put a drip at a time. It soaks in and doesn't evaporate. That's a prevention. Here's another one. or So prevention, drip irrigation. Here's more. Crops that need less water. If you live in an area that's dry and you have to irrigate your crops, why don't you choose crops that have less water need? Like barley. Water sensors, there are little computer sensors on your field that tell you when it's dry and you only water when it's dry. You use a lot of humus on your soil. Humus prevents evaporation. Mitigation is how to fix a problem. How do you mitigate soil salinization? You've got salty fields, what do you do? Well, you can flush your soil with fresh water if enough is available to flush it through. Or you can plant crops that don't mind salt too much, like barley. Barley is salt tolerant, so you can plant that crop instead. 265. 
We have two different types of fertilizer on page 266. Under agriculture, fertilizers boost crop yields but can be over-applied. Fertilizer in general contains three things, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, which we actually call potash. Kind of weird, but it's true. So on crop fertilizers, you'll see the word potash. Inorganic fertilizer is man-made. Synthetic is another term for man-made. It's more likely to wash into waterways and cause eutrophication. The word organic fertilizer refers to something that's living. These can be green manure, which is crop residue and vegetation that has died, kind of like making a compost bin in your backyard. It can be animal manure, which is their poop that you um, put under tarps and you let the, the heat from the sun kill off any bad bacteria and you let it decompose, and compost. So these are all three types of organic fertilizer. Now organic here doesn't mean like organic farming or organic food. This just means fertilizer that comes from living things because the word organic technically in the dictionary means living and inorganic means non-living. Here's another wonderful picture of eutrophication and how farming inorganic fertilizers wash into water streams and cause eutrophication. I have four stars here because the AP test loves to ask about eutrophication. Read the caption, look at the picture, review eutrophication again. Health risks. This is a little star because it's not in your book. In water, phosphates cause cancer. Nitrates cause blue baby disease. So if we have too much fertilizer, it washes into a river that then people use that river as drinking water in a city or even in the farm. So you might have farmers that use the fertilizer and then it gets into their groundwater, their well water, and then they pump well water and drink it. If it has too many phosphates, it can cause cancer. If it has too many nitrates, it causes blue baby disease. Blue baby disease is when nitrates bind to the hemoglobin bind to the um, sorry red blood cells in place of hemoglobin. Um, I'm not explaining that well. Okay. On the blood cells, there's a place where oxygen can bind. If nitrates are in the water, the nitrates bind to this instead of oxygen. And so people, and particularly babies, can't get oxygen because it can't bind to their blood cells from their lungs. And so the baby turns blue because it's not getting oxygen. It's breathing, but those oxygen cells have nowhere to bind to the blood in the lungs because nitrates are already there. And that's a bad thing. That's why they turn blue. Page 268. We have here a description of overgrazing. Read the caption, understand. Overgrazing is a positive feedback loop. More grazing leads to more erosion, which leads to grazing in a different place, which leads to more erosion, etc. Can cause um, or can allow invasive plants to take root there because if the ground is bare from cattle that have ripped out all of the grass, some species can come in and invade from other places if people bring them in in some way. We end up also with compacted soil, and that means the soil is too hard, and the roots can't grow, and water can't infiltrate it. And you can see here that this farmer on his land has allowed overgrazing, and this one has not, and you can see the clear difference between the two. On page 270, fires are really important. And that's something strange for new students of apes to understand how important fires are because we think of fires as destructive and bad and put them out. As human beings, we don't like to see our property destroyed. 
fires are really important for ecosystems and for farming. So as you read through this article, The Science Behind the Story, make sure you understand how fire suppression has led to rangeland degradation. So read through this article and be able to write about it or recognize it on a multiple choice question. And the last thing for chapter 9 is you need to understand about logging and how deforestation, which is you cut down the trees, causes erosion. You also need to know about the Conservation Reserve Program and what this agency and this program is. And that's the end of notes for chapter 9.